Welcome back to iHeartRadio So Bad It's Good. Today, uh, this is a very special day because there's only a, a few people that I would get up at 8 in the morning for, and you, we have two of them today. Uh, so sorry if I'm just waking up. I thought I had that like nightmare that I was going to sleep way past this, and I didn't, so already it's a great morning. But these two people, I don't even think they know how much they mean to me, and probably how much they mean to you. Now, I've told you how much you've listened to this show for three years. I love pop culture so much. And part of loving pop culture before podcasting and stuff like that was obsessively refreshing your computer on sites like TMZ. And I did that probably 80 times a day. I would sneak it at work. Uh, if you, uh, you you recognize Dax from TMZ, if you see him, you recognize him. Uh, he is one of the uh, like most known faces from that. And Adam Glynn, uh, he's a guy that like, took paparazzi to street journalism level and has talked with everybody out there. These two people have some of the most inside scoop of entertainment news today, and they have an excellent podcast, airs two times a week. It's called Hollywood Raw. It is the ultimate entertainment podcast, and I'm fine saying that even though this is an entertainment podcast. <laughs> These people, I mean, they've, they've been doing this. They know everything. I could throw anything out there at them, and I'm going to try to do that today and, and see what they have, but this is just, I've been looking forward to this so long I was lucky enough to fill in for Adam when he was seeing uh, Rihanna at the Super Bowl uh, a couple weeks ago. And so I'm so glad they get to come on mine finally. So Adam Glenn, Dax Holt from the Hollywood Raw podcast. Welcome to the show. That was a damn good intro. Hello, buddy. Yeah. How are you? Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, Dax, I know you now, but Adam, I've not got, I was just listening to your Friday episode and you guys, if you're looking for just a quick adrenaline hit of pop culture, it is such a, they do like a top 10 rundown and I was listening to it, talking out loud to myself going, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I, so I, I, Dax, can you guys explain to me uh, how you guys came together? I mean, was it at TMZ working there together? Well, the funny part was, so Adam and I, we worked together for quite a few, how many years, Adam, do you think we actually worked together? Like six, seven, it's six, yeah. Like six. We were not friends, though, really, at TMZ. Like, we, he was in New York. I was in L.A. We didn't really have much interaction, so we, did, we didn't hang out. He would come out to L.A. every once in a while. They'd bring him out for, like, a holiday party, or he would be do, shooting something in L.A. And so I, like, saw him, and I'd maybe say hi, but that was kind of the extent of it. We weren't really friends. We really connected after both of us had left TMZ, and we're like, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm not doing much. And his name kind of popped into <laughs> mind when I was approached to do a podcast. Someone was like, oh, you need to do an entertainment podcast. And I was like, well, who could I have co-host? Well, Adam, he's like the best talker I know, one of the best interviewers I know. And that's really kind of where our friendship started up was through the podcast. Yeah, Adam, Dax was like we, we, Dax and Dax and I had different positions. I was on the street doing yeah. all the paparazzi street interviews, and I was based in New York City. Dax was in LA, and Dax's job was to go through all the photos that came in through all the photo agencies and see what photos or what video, what content was good for TMZ.com and the TMZ uh, TMZ TV show. I, I mean, it, it, th this just I, I geek out on this so hard. Um, uh, let me hit you with something that happened over the weekend. I know you're not uh, working with TMZ anymore, but just in your expert opinion. Mm -hmm. And I know, uh, Adam, you're not on the, uh, the the Vanderpump beat like a lot of us. I mean, you 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 did hang out with Sheena just a week and a half ago when all I of this broke. Was the, the, uh, you, so, guys, he tells his story on Friday's episode where he was with Sheena and Ra Rachel, Raquel, whatever we're calling her, that night. And Sheena, the next morning was texting or DMing with you saying that she got into a fight with Raquel. Is that correct? She did. Yeah, yeah. I was with Sheena Raquel in New York City. This was Wednesday. Now, last Wednesday, they were in New York, and they were doing media all morning. They did, I think they did, like, New York Post. They did uh, yeah, an NBC they did, show. They did a bunch of different media that day. I was with them towards the end of their media day, not before, before Watch What Happens Live, and they were sort of tired. We were at this thing called Rise New York together. It's like this... Um, it's like a cool kind of exhibit about New York for New Yorkers yeah. in Times Square. So we hung out, and they were super chill. They were cool, um, very pretty, had a lot of tanning uh, material on. <laughs> and, uh, that's all we need to know. Yeah, that's you definitely hung out with Sheena. I got it. Yeah. yeah. So they were, but they were cool. Very um, people. I've met like a lot of the cast members from Vanderpump. From they're all very nice, but they're very LA in a way. Um, and that's 
it's just it's a vibe anyway yeah. super cool super fun that night they did watch what happens and it was funny right before we were waiting for their car to come to take them back to the hotel to get ready for watch what happens i asked them i go do you guys get nervous when you do watch what happens and sheena was like no i get excited for it and she's like this is the <laughs> first time i've done the show with who's someone who's a friend of mine with raquel because every time <laughs> she's done in the past in the past she's done with people like wolf blitzer and like random like people but this is the fr and they have no say of who they get to do the show with but this was the first time that raquel uh that sheena was doing the show with a girl who's a friend of hers they well, did what? watch what happened well, that, yeah, that, yeah. that day that was the last day of their friendship yes yeah. <laughs> yeah that night they did watch what happens and i didn't see the episode i didn't watch watch what happens but the next morning sheena hit me up and she was like hey uh you know we talked about some things she's like yeah i got into a fight with raquel last night i was like wait what like eight hours ago we were together and you guys were just saying like you guys were friends and i know you guys were on two different flights on the you guys were taking two different flights home you guys were also staying at the same hotel but you just were saying you guys were friends like i don't understand how you guys just got into a fight and now you're apparently not talking to each other and then what i found out from uh, a friend of mine who's very close to the vanderpump cast and yeah. and said to me like they explained to me, I mean, pretty much they told me everything this what, what happened, what went down. I was like, oh, shit. I'm sorry. Oh, um, no, you can. Uh, no, okay. no, no, no. Okay. This, is a, um, this is an adult podcast. Oh, okay. poop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, man. Hey, kids, Adam just told you your first, it taught you your first naughty word on this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, this is huge news. The problem was I was like, so I knew about it before it came. But the Sheena, whole thing became public. Adam, yeah. Sheena didn't when he, when. Are you kind of hitting yourself now because she did, I mean, did you go, why, what happened? Did you have your reporter brain on at all of like, tell me everything? Or were you like, oh, that sucks. Well, have a good day. Well, I didn't know to the extent of what the fight was. And I didn't know what it was over. I mean, I was like, you guys were just friends. It had to be something so small and stupid because what friends fight like this? And, and by the way, don't forget, you were going, you were on the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic. So your brain was kind of not in that moment too. Yeah, I was yeah. at. I was, yeah, so I flew the next day to Columbus, Ohio, to go to the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, Classic, this like big bodybuilding strongman yeah. competition. So a big, uh, not a big celebrity, another celebrity hit me up, who also is very connected to the Vanderpump, and told me everything went went down. So I didn't know that the news was going to break that quick. However, yeah. what in my opinion was one of the people within the cast leaked the news to someone at tmz who broke the story and then the story went crazy which i could have broke the story i just wasn't in front of a computer i had a lot of stuff going on i was yeah uh, i wasn't right there but I was, and you probably assume these people fight every day like you know like the, yeah. the banner pump people like they're reality stars i mean you guys were just talking about the brandy Glan glanville ultimate girls trip fight like these mm -hmm. things happen all the time in reality shows but now it's kind of exploded into this really big thing where the camera crews back up after they finish the, sh uh, the the season what i wanted to ask you guys this weekend tmz released uh an exclusive video we saw back grid uh on the 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 video the itself credit, yeah. and it, yeah it was at lax interviewing tom schwartz a walk and talk for like four and a half minutes and can you explain from your perspective it, how this video even goes down was it because, a setup shot yes it looks very because he doesn't look that surprised he actually even yeah. says to the guy oh uh, i think the last time i saw you was my divorce or something like that and he answers every there's very specific questions he answers everything could you explain how this happens is this real or not I'll let Adam take this one because I've got my opinion, but I want to hear what Adam says because he's the one out in the streets more often. So doing this, I think yeah. he can pick it out. Yeah, no. Uh, again, I don't know the camera guy who did the interview. Now, you, Ryan, I appreciate you asking that because you, you know your stuff. So it's good that you knew about Backgrid and the photo agency. So the video wasn't actually shot by TMZ. It was shot by uh, a freelancer or another photographer, paparazzi who gave the video to Backward and Backward kind of licensed the material to different news outlets around the country. Now the video itself, it seemed like Tom knew he was going to be there. Like in my, again, this is just my opinion. I don't know this one for sure. Yeah. And usually I'm very good at this one, but for my, um, cause I usually know the guys who do setup shots from my, uh, in my perspective, this was a little bit of a setup shot. He knew he was going to be there. He stopped and talked. I'm surprised it took this long for him to do the setup shot and kind of speak. Um, yes, I do think this was a setup shot because 
there's not too many good video guys out there. And this video guy was actually very good. He knew his questions. He knew everything that was going on yeah. in the Vanderpump. Like, it felt the questions were very outlined where he knew to get to all the points. And it was in a very good order. So I do feel like this was a setup shot. Do I judge it? No. Do I think it was good for him and good for his personal brand to get his opinion out? Absolutely. But I will say, if you saw this morning, and again, we're doing this episode the day before this episode. If you're seeing this episode live, this is a uh, Lala Kent just did an interview with I TMZ. saw that. I just I woke up and saw that. Yeah. Now Lala Kent, in my opinion, has been very outspoken about everything. And, you know, <laughs> she's been very public about everything, about everything going on in her life. I mean, you can't. She's been like an open book about when it comes to everything that's going on in her life. I do believe that was a setup shot to. A, a setup shot as well and the reason i say that is because i know where the paparazzi usually shoot in la i know that tmz doesn't have that many people on the streets anymore as they once did when i was there they used to have 26 people on the streets and now they have like a handful and it was like an off the off the radar spot it was a it was a spot that wasn't on the normal path for a paparazzi which means that Someone had to tip them off. Something was going on. Yeah. Now, I feel like now that Tom gave his opinion, Lala said, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and give my opinion of what's going on. She did a whole two and a half minute interview with um, with a TMZ person. So I do think she tipped them off. For the Tom one, back to the Tom, in my opinion, I do think it was a setup shot. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not. I, I was just gonna say. I'm like. The, I do want to put out there. I'm all for setup shots. I am. I am not against it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I feel like it. It to utilize the paparazzi celebs do it it's a back and forth give and take relationship it's a handshake deal yeah it is and you know what an interview like that is going to go a lot further for tom than him going and sitting down and chatting with jimmy kimmel you know what i'm saying yeah. like yeah that interview is going to get picked up on every website yeah we it, all the all the instagram bloggers spread it all the yeah. we all spread that information so by saturday night it was everywhere everywhere and we were all throwing our opinions but to that point though well first off adam i think it's great that you're you make it sound like the tmz reporters it's like the last of us there's just a few scurrying about los angeles right now <laughs> yeah. um but i love it. it's like the but uh, the thing, the other question everybody has about this, I love these kind of walk and talks. I don't care if they're staged. You get so much information out of it. Can you explain? Could is money changing hands besides backgrid licensing this stuff out? Is money exchanging hands with people like Schwartz and Lala? We know this. We you don't know that specific answer, but uh, I don't. Is there I'm, money exchanging hands? I'm gonna say no. From my experience, that's not the benefit for the celeb. The celeb needs the press. They need the publicity. They need coverage. So that is what they get out of it. They stay relevant. They're not getting paid. The The money exchange is, yeah, going from a back grid licensing to TMZ, especially if it's exclusive. I mean, that's, you know, a bigger chunk of change because that just makes sense. You're getting exclusive. Not everyone's getting it. Um but no, I don't see the celeb getting it. And it's rare that the celeb gets that payoff. I, I know that that's happened in the past, that there's certain celebs that, yes, they want that monetary kickback if they're going to allow the paparazzi to take their photo, maybe in their bikini on the beach at some exclusive set. Yeah, there might be an arrangement, but for the most part, it's, you know, you're getting press out of it. And that's what these people need. Yeah, from my experience, I... I've only paid, and again, I've I've done a bunch of setup shots, and it's fine. And um, and it, it, listen, I, I think it's good because what I say is this: my my thing with setup shots is, and this is my pitch to a lot of celebrities, or influencers, or people in the news. I say, listen, if you do an interview for the Today Show, you do an interview for the Today Show. If you do an interview for Live with Kelly, you do an interview for Live with Kelly. When you do an interview with me, it's an interview for the internet. And uh, what does that mean? Absolutely. I have no idea. It's just a really good pitch. <laughs> but it's uh, uh, <laughs> I'm in. Like, uh, yeah, let's do it, Adam. I'm in. This sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of blogs pick it up. And I think it's also it's a very cool interview in a way because when you're on the Today Show, when you're on Jimmy Fallon, when you're on The View, you're performing. The lights are on you. The camera's on you. You're not being real. You're, you're, you're really you're, – the questions you know are coming, they're kind of performed. When it's an interview on the streets, they're raw, it's real, it's a guerrilla style, and I just feel like you just get more um, authenticity with it. Now, when it came to as far as what does the celebrity get out of it, from my experience, only once 
have I paid a celebrity? I paid them twice and I gave them money um, for the interview. And it wasn't a big person at all. It was Sandra Bullock, but it was, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> But it was uh, an idiot. <laughs> no, but it was like a random. So it was not a big celebrity, and I gave them some money in exchange. I said, "Listen, I want to make give. I want to make it worth your time as well." And this is someone who could have used the money, and it wasn't much money because at the end of the day, I don't make enough money where it's a difference maker for them. Because you have your own photo agency, yeah. right? You have your own photo agency or your own. Uh, or I was yeah. reading in your bio, so you. I mean, this is what you still do on a daily basis. Is you're still licensing photos and things like that yeah i'm still running around the streets with my camera and i it's not even my own because i don't i only do with my own content my content's a little unique it's not the normal type of stuff i monetize my content obviously on social media via youtube uh and then once in a while i'll give it to the outlets to kind of use my material not much because what happens is is i if i get an interview and i give it to let's say tmz TMZ will go around saying, oh, people will say, oh, look what TMZ got. I'm like, no, no, no. TMZ didn't get them. I got them. Adam Glenn got the interview. So I don't want to give TMZ or let's just say another media outlet the, the benefit of the doubt. Like, oh, they got the interview. I, I am my own brand. And the reason why they talked to me, they didn't talk to me because I'm TMZ. They talked to me because I'm Adam Glenn. And that's not me being a dick or a narcissistic guy. It's like I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm trying to make it, guys. So it's yeah. like it's me trying to hustle and grind and – I've worked hard and more than a decade in this. They develop these relationships, and that's why some of these people talk to me. Yeah. Uh, do you guys uh, love celebrity pop culture and stuff like this? Is this like a, a passion, or do you consider this most work, or is it both? No, I, I think we both love this. And I, we've always joked about how we were like the kids who – would like pick up the Us Weekly magazine yes! off the like coffee table yes. and read it, and you know I, I I just and I don't even know what the obsession is or why I was I gravitated towards it, but I've always just I've known celebrities, known the stories, their backstories, all that kind of stuff my whole life, and I don't I don't I don't know why it's just what I've I gravitated to. Like I even got into like I was working for ESPN for a little bit, and I'm like. Why am I here? Like I don't know these <laughs> athletes. Like this is not my my thing. And uh, so, getting into entertainment news was just such an easy transition. I like it just comes naturally. I would say to yeah. me, and probably the same to Adam. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I I always said to Dax when well, we always said together. It's you know before that, we, it was hard to prove to girls that I was straight. Because I just knew so much. <laughs> it's the same thing. People just assume. Old. They're like, yes, queen, yes. And I'm like, I'm, the, I'm sorry, dude. I, I don't know why. I, I got the hard copy of Us Weekly. I got the hard like, I'm <laughs> the hard copy, the hard cover Us Weekly. Uh, it was just, um, it was something that it was like high school to me, you know. And that's what it is. It's something about high school that you just kind of want to know what's going on in the business. And I found the very the politics behind the industry very interesting i found the fan the the fascination of like how the you know this industry works i was obsessed with that and that's what we kind of do on our podcast we always say we like to humanize hollywood and we hope people kind of enjoy that side where we kind of like people understand like the business behind the business and how that business what keeps the 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 industry going in a way um it's just exciting for me you know i don't it, it's it's just something where I, i'm still a fan i get yeah, excited yeah I mean, every day there's something new. That's a, it's a constantly evolving. But what are the biggest? What is the biggest change? Like thinking about the music industry when Napster hit and all of it. You know, what is the biggest change in terms of celebrity pop culture in the last decade in your eyes? Oh, that's social media, hundred percent. It was yeah, hundred yeah. percent social media because when TMZ first started up, we were still having to go through publicists to get responses to get uh, some kind of sound bite from a celebrity. And then as social media kind of took over, it, you were less dependent on PR people and publicists giving you information. Stars would just do it themselves on Twitter or on Instagram or, you know, so you had access. You didn't have this access years ago. So I'd say that has been 100% the biggest just shift change in entertainment news. And, um, you know, being I, I feel like the people who are off social media are still the more interesting people like the the Brad Pitts and Leonardo DiCaprio's because there's still some mysterious to them. 
Yeah, they're yeah. You don't know everything about them because they're not posting every time they take a dump or every time they go on a vacation. You know, so you're curious about them. Whereas people that post every single thing, you're like, all right, well, I know what they're up to, so I'm not really curious about them anymore. Well, I mean, that's I was thinking about in terms of like binge watching shows nowadays because of social media, you almost binge, uh, binge read pop culture. And sometimes a story can break and end within a day period now. But then there are people and families like the Kardashians that constantly hit that button again and again and again. And right now I feel like we're in this weird uh, not silence because the Kardashians just went to the Vanity Fair party and uh, birthday party on Friday, but it's a, it feels more quiet on the Kardashian front than usual. What is your take on the Kardashians as a family? Because you've seen their rise to power and how they've used things like TMZ, Backgrid, and all of that stuff. Uh, what is your take on them now and where they're headed? I mean, they're awesome. I mean, personally, I got to say, you know, from my experience with the Kardashians, it's a little surreal in a way, um, because like, again, I've been doing this for more than a decade and I was on the streets. I was never on the red carpets or on the production team, you know, and I would deal with Kim when she would fly commercial and I would get her when there was no, uh, there was no bodyguards, there's no security, but she was always so cool and she was always very nice and she's still very nice. Like she's good to the fans. I always say you could be a dick to me, but I judge a lot of celebrities on how they are to the fans and she's very good. Like you could, t you could see how she is to the people around her. She's very sweet and she's very nice. But at the end of the day, it's like they changed the game. You know, this is like when people used to say, like, what are they famous for? But now you see the biggest stars in the world trying to rub elbows with them and try to get some of that, uh, you know, s you know, some of the magic. Kardashian fairy sank. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, no, I want to kind of hang out with them. I want to see what they're doing. I want to be involved with them because it's good to be. And it's uh, what are they going to do next? I mean, I, I don't know how you could get bigger. I don't know. They're because at the point now, if we had sirs and like. Like if we had a sir or whatever they make like the a in, in <laughs> like a knighting, they would be knighted in America. Dame like, Dame Kimmeth Kardashian, yeah. yes. Yeah, there would be a dame here. That's yeah. I feel like if we did that in America, they would be dames, they would be knighted here well, in America. In reality That's though, like big done. they are I mean, as sad as it is, they are our royal family here in the US. You know what I'm saying? Like you we talk about them like them. the Royals on a daily yeah. basis. There's so many rumors. I mean, listen, Chloe just yesterday, I mean, just gave a huge Instagram shout out to Tristan Thompson, mm -hmm. best father, best this. And I'm like, this is also the same dude that's publicly che cheated on her. TMZ broke that story. TMZ like yeah. multiple times. And to me, that's fascinating because you're just thinking about the psychology of this person that is still giving shout outs to this guy and just what a wonderful person and father he is. Yet we've seen publicly every time time he's humiliated her and we have a record because of people like you guys doing god's work i mean that's probably not god's work but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no but really i like here's what people like people obviously love to hate the kardashians it's just a yeah. fun thing to do but i i'm on the kardashian boat i love them i think that what they have done over the last whatever 15 years it's remarkable it's really hard to stay relevant in hollywood like to have a reality show, to s stay current, to keep people talking about you, that's not easy. And they have this talent to keep the narrative going, to keep people interested in them, to change up the storylines. Like, I, it's, it's remarkable that they are here today and even more powerful and more prominent than they were 15 years ago. Yeah, I give them a lot of credit, even just like on a self-help mentally, to go through the stuff they've been through and also kind of still somewhat seem level-headed, especially in Hollywood, which is a super tough, crazy industry where you're not getting invested in, you know, drugs or something like that. Or, you know, with everything that's gone on through their life with Caitlyn and divorces and all that stuff to kind of still like mentally stay strong with all like the stories that go on in the media from the, even the robberies overseas. I mean, it's, they still have been able to stay like, even yeah. the Kanye divorce. I mean, think of all the stuff that he went out and said publicly and tried to kind of like pull her down. You know, like she's kept a, a pretty stable 
sense of self this whole time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it is fascinating you know, for a family to go from like selling tummy tea to selling some of the world's biggest and best products, you know, mm-hmm. wearing designer clothes. Uh, it just, it really is something that to, to be studied. And I study it all the time, but you're right. I get so much crap for it on this show when I talk about them, but I'm like, if you love pop culture, you have to study them. Like there's just, there's nobody else doing it at that level. I just wonder where, like you said earlier, where they go from here. Like, I mean, and it seems like the men in their lives are the biggest chink in their armor from Tristan to Kanye to Travis to you know, Travis Scott, you know, um, speaking of, uh, Kanye, I was just watching for the first time, some, some video of him and his new wife, Sensori or Sensori. And he's obviously still, you know, dealing with whatever, uh, just the horribleness he spewed in December. What is your guys's feel on that? Is there going to be any kind of a relation with like a handshake deal, with uh, entertainment reporters to eventually have him do some sort of comeback? Or does he even care at this point? I mean, I think Kanye is just on another planet himself. Um, I think until he gets the self-help he needs, it's it's not possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like everything he's done over the last year has really put a stain on his his legendary status you know like let's be real kanye is crazy talented really successful and has so much genius inside of him but he ruined a lot of that with his comments and it's like you spewed so much hatred and just dumb crap over the last year and a half that like i can't look at him as kanye the the musician the talent anymore i look at him as like kanye the dumbass so like How do you recuperate your image after all of that? Like, you have to come out and be like, sorry, guys, I was mentally unstable. I said some wild stuff. I really apologize. And here's how I have made myself better. But, like, he's got to work on himself before he can rehab his image at this point. Yeah, so we did the story on the Hollywood Raw podcast where, I mean, this is a true story that – Kanye became very, you know, obviously during all the anti-Semitic comments that came out, you know, a couple months back that Kanye was looking for a publicist and he was kind of going from publicist to publicist, but nobody wanted to work with him. And then he was looking for a conservative podcast. uh, I'm sorry, conservative publicist that can help him in that direction. Yeah, Yeah. And a lot of the publicists and he was paying like a lot of money to these publicists, but they realized the publicists that a, they couldn't really help him and b that working with Kanye hurt the relationships with their other clients and also with the media outlets that were offended by him so it became like he you just couldn't touch him um so like Dak said i think it's he's just got to work on himself and i think right now i it's i'm a jew was i offended of course was i mad i mean i don't I don't. It is what he it was is. Pissing off everyone, like he was, he was pissing, pissing off, off everyone. But it's like he was pissing off the Jewish community. It's just yeah, like he was offending was just... everyone. And I and here's the thing with Kanye, I had I've always had a hard time discerning. Like, is this how he really feels, or he is just saying this for shock value to yeah. piss people off? Because like, yeah. why else would you say, um, uh, you know, slavery was a choice? Like, you have so to bad. be legit wild. And to say that, or you're just trying to rile people up to get publicity. It, I mean, I, that was in the TMZ offices. I remember exactly watching that. I remember watching that interview. And he still was able to come back for a couple of years after that, or Kim was able to kind of keep him at bay. And it's just really wild because I'm like, how are you ever supposed to enjoy his music again and have like, yeah, and like, in, you know, introduce your kids to his music. And uh, when you're like, oh, just... Just ignore everything he says. Just don't listen to anything. Just listen to his music. I, I find it hard to separate the two nowadays because I think in pop culture, you you unite you know what the person says and what they do nowadays more than mm-hmm. ever. I think right now what Kanye is doing is very good though. He's just staying quiet. You know, you're trying. I I wish he would not go to all the Giorgio Baldi restaurants and some of the hot spots in LA. But I think right now the best thing for him to do is kind of stay quiet for a little bit. If I was his rep. I would let him stay quiet, let the dust settle a little bit, and then eventually, I don't know, if you plan to come back in the industry and want to be work in the industry again and win people back over or just kind of get, then kind of speak again and kind of be out there. But for right now, just stay quiet. Just stay yeah. away. Just Someone should have taken away his Twitter password a lot sooner though <laughs> like that would have been I mean, Kim's best move just I, I always think throw away the password 
Like the point is, like I always think, like oh man, if I could get two million dollars, like I would, I would shut up for the rest of my life. I always think that, but then these people, they get this power and fame, and they want to talk more than ever. They never like want to hold it back, and they just kind of ruin it sometimes for themselves. I see. What is the story that you're uh, the the most tired of this year or last I, year that you're like literally I can't. Kanye. Literally Kanye. We got so to sorry, where... Dax. I'm sorry, you guys. No, no, no. It's it's funny because on our rundowns where we cover, you know, the the number one, uh, the top ten stories of the week. Every week it was Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. We got to a point where we're like we cannot cover him anymore because it's just it's too much. It's in your face nonstop between him and Kim, and then them getting the divorce, and then him getting remarried and the Julie Fox. And like, it was just like, we were so sick of talking about him. I'm not sick right this moment, but we were <laughs> tired of there. talking about him. Um, just cause every, every week it was something new with him. Adam, yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, no, we, we, we actually said like, we're just done. There's not much more we yeah, could say. Yeah. It was just becoming exhausting and it became like, um, it was like, are we, you know, he hasn't, we're, we're doing stories about a guy who's obviously going through some mental health issues and it just became enough. I was like, I just don't want to even get into it anymore. Like you could read about it. I just don't want to even bring it any more attention to the story. And I think there's a fun to pop culture that sometimes it even crosses a line where, like you said, it's not fun anymore. The story I'm having the most hard, like trying to really get invested in, a lot of people want me to get invested in, is the Haley Bieber, Selena Gomez with a side of Kylie Jenner. Uh, where do you guys fall on this? Should I care? I'm finding it hard because you you talk about high school drama. This is like ground zero for it. I I think, I think that... They don't even want to be talking about it themselves. I think Selena's <laughs> so over being included on every Justin Bieber narrative ever that uh, I haven't spent too much time. We covered the story uh, about them, but it's almost like I, I, don't, I don't think the girls want to be involved in this narrative. So, like, why do we care? So is it the fan bases keeping this story yes. going? Is that, I mean, 100%. it feels like a war between fan bases at times. A hundred percent. That's that's the only reason that uh, Selena, every move she makes, it's like someone says, oh, but what was Justin Bieber doing that day? Like, what does it matter? Like, if you watch her documentary, um, I did, she yeah. literally struggles with like, why can't I date someone without it being connected to Justin? Or why does he get married and I get wrapped into the narrative? Like, enough not everyone's connected to their exes after they've moved on with their lives we i get it we were a big couple but like move on people and it's the same we've done with jennifer annis and brad pitt for so many years you know he they were remarried to other people but yet the world still kind of like wants them together and so everything they do they keep pitting them against each other or combining the narrative together yeah. Uh, uh, moving on to the Oscars from this uh, past uh, Sunday, was there any stories coming out of that for you guys that you found immediately interesting? Even uh, you Ooh, know, Adam's the got vanity, a great story. The, van the Vanity Fair and the Elton John parties. Yeah. Wait, did you know about this? Wait, how did you? Just, we were just. Oh my God! Are you are you are you in my room right now? How the fuck? <laughs> no. Um, they, they, this is literally what I eat and breathe. So I was like, oh, these guys probably oh, have something good. Yeah. So you want to hear something crazy? So I um. This is wild, dude. Um, so, obviously, the Vanity Fair party. I'm so excited to tell you this. You're like the first person we really talked about it with. Um, and we were just talking about this. So, the Vanity Fair party, as people know, is probably the most uh, exclusive party. Where is, I wouldn't say the word exclusive. It's the biggest party after yeah. the Oscars. As you see the photos the next day, obviously, everyone of everyone goes to this party from... I mean, Dax, who were some of the names that we saw at this year's? Uh, oh my God, it was John Legend, Chrissy Teigen, Julia I mean, Gardner, uh, yeah. everyone, Kendall, Justin, yeah. just, everyone's I mean, at this party. Everyone. Justin wore a Thank blanket. God. Justin wore a blanket to the Vanity Fair party, which some Very people exciting. were like, kind of like, dude, come on, like, you know, saying you're trying to be cool. But I talked to two different sources there, and actually another source, and we're going to get into that. But this party was always epic. Now, I asked people, and these are big name people that went to the party. And I was like, how was it? And he could, you know, sometimes I get my stories from other kind of notable people and they kind of tell me a little bit of a vibe and stuff like that. They said, well, this year's party wasn't that great. And I go, what do you mean? Like, what wasn't great about this party? And they said that, well, this year's party, it felt like there's a lot of people there that were not supposed to be there. And I go, what do you mean? <laughs> and apparently, uh, that. It, it was like people that were wealthy, but they obviously had to have paid to go to the party. 
You know, these are people that paid money, a lot of money. They knew someone who they could kind of pay off to kind of go to the party. So I talked to two different people, and apparently the celebrities that were there, they were getting attacked, ambushed by people that just wanted selfies. Wherever you, were, wherever you went in the party, everyone's like, hey, can I get a photo? Can I get a photo here? Now, we know that a lot of celebrities go just for that photo. They just kind of walk the red carpet and leave and go to a Gaio series party, which is a very exclusive party. But yeah. some people actually do hang out at the party for a little bit. Most celebrities who went to the party were only there for about an hour or maybe an hour and a half tops because, again, they were being ambushed by selfie people, people just who like want to like network with them, and they're like, "What is going on here? This is a you got to realize vibe. in the past that's not what happens at the Vanity Fair party because yeah. everyone is a list, everyone is involved in Hollywood, so that's a party you can like chill at. Yes, there's roaming photographers for like Getty getting snaps, but it's not like a selfie party, and so to have that happen is really unusual. And these celebrities go to these parties to network with each other, to kind of, uh, you know, do business with each other. It's cool for them to all be in the same room and connect with each other. Uh, it's just, it, it's that kind of vibe. It's just, it's good for, it's good for good both for parties. Business. <laughs> good for business. It's show business, so it's good for business. Now, a lot of them are getting attacked, and like they're like, "Yeah, definitely, people paid to get this party." So then I called a contact I have, and not not like this hardcore journalist yeah. contact source guy, but I know a guy who's a high end ticket broker. Now, the wealthy, you know, this guy deals with people. Wealthy people don't want to go see Drake perform. They want to see Drake perform during sound check and get them get a photo with him. The wealthy don't want to go to a football game and sit in a box. The wealthy want to go to a football game and get to be on the they get the field passes. You know, they want to get that. They want to get like some sort of extra sort of bonus and they're going to pay a lot of money for that sort of experience. People paid to go to this year's Oscars. There was like some sort of money to kind of go to the Oscars, which normally that's not how it used to work. Or, or I think probably it's how it's always worked, but it's becoming more uh, vocal. People paid to go to the Vanity Fair party. Now, who actually got the money? I don't know if the money went to Vanity Fair. I don't know if the money went to some publicists or producers who kind of got paid on the side. Like, hey, here's some, you know, a couple thousand bucks. Shut the fuck up. Like, you know, let's go to this party. <laughs> now, the Vanity Fair party, my buddy said, well, actually, I had two clients who went to the party. I go, how much did these people pay to go to the party? Two people paid, well, it was a total of $40,000 just to go to the Vanity Fair party. Now, if he wasn't the only person sneaking people, kind of getting these people into the party, I'm sure there was other people that paid to go into the party. And that's what it's been coming. Um, you know, there was a lot was that, of people. Was that Jill Zarin? Was Jill Zarin the one? Dude, <laughs> right? Like, how the fuck did me and Dr. Stan, how are people like Jill Zarin there? So someone, I don't think Jill Zarin came. By the way, and Jill Zarin you know, was there taking pictures with everybody. She was like hopping into photos. She was there. And, and by the way, Jill Zarin's been on the Hollywood Raw podcast, I believe. Yeah. She's very yes, sweet. Yeah. She's very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, like Jill Zarin was there and nothing against Jill. Like, I don't, Jill didn't need to be there. I don't need to be there. I mean, of course. If I was Jill Zarin, I would totally take advantage of the situation. But like, there's people, a lot of people that paid to either sponsors and stuff like that to go to the party. They paid a lot of money to be to get to these parties, which is kind of funny and crazy. That is why. I mean, that really blows me away. But I totally uh, because I, you know, growing up as a kid, the Vanity Fair party was always sold to me as mm -hmm. the most exclusive party. Everybody was handpicked. There was no stragglers. There was not. You go to the Elton John party for that, but not at the Vanity <laughs> Fair party. So that is fascinating. And I wonder if any rules will be in place for next year uh, to make that more exclusive and stuff like that. Um, I also you were talking about I think you mentioned really quickly, but I was. Wondering if you guys had any information on Tom Cruise not being at the Oscars because I thought he was going to go there and take his, you know, flowers for saving the film industry. I thought he would be doing. And somebody said, "Oh, he didn't want an awkward run-in with Nicole Kidman on the red, uh, the white carpet or champagne carpet." I, I don't think he cares about yeah running like, in with Nicole Kidman. I don't. I don't think their that's teams honest. could keep him apart. I think the bigger problem is that he wasn't nominated for Best Actor, and I think I, I honestly. He should have got that nomination just because that movie was so big. He did a great job. I think that he deserved a nomination for that. You guys hear that? Yeah, I think Adam. 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 Like, take your microphone. Oh, oh shit, my bad, right. dude. <laughs> um, I'm drinking water. I'm sorry. So yeah, he, definitely, he definitely deserves a nomination. 
Um, and I think it was a pretty big snub to him. So he's like, why am I going to show up? I basically reinvented getting movies back into theaters and I didn't get the nomination. So like screw off Oscars. I think that's why he didn't go. I, I think he was offended by the whole situation personally. Is there any other stories coming out of that night that like interest you guys or that, that are still like two days later, uh, keep coming back? Anything that you're hearing from any of these parties with celebrities? No, my big no. thing is, so what, yeah. what is, uh, I watched the whole Oscars going, I haven't seen everything everywhere <laughs> all at once. So I was like, what the fuck oh. is happening tonight? <laughs> I was yeah, like, you must what, is a this, lost. what is this musical performance? Why has the guy got hot dogs on his fingers? Like that was the, way, and if you are, if you haven't seen the movie, you feel really yeah. left out because everyone's going nuts for these people. And I'm like, I don't know why everyone is so wild. And every clip that they're showing you from the movie, I'm like, I mean, it seems okay, but it doesn't seem like the best <laughs> acting job I've ever seen. How are they beating out everyone? I don't know. Did you watch the movie? Uh, yeah, I mean, I love the movie. Is I thought it, it good? was good. Yes, it's excellent. I, I really, I personally loved it. Uh, so I was excited to see it win all those awards. I think, you know, the Oscars are weird because you have films like Top Gun and Avatar, which everyone has seen, like, you know, and then other movies, the job is to kind of sell those to middle America and stuff. And that's really hard because they're there to celebrate movies like Top Gun, Avatar, things that actually did bring people back to the movie theaters. But in terms of accomplishment, I think, you know, everything everywhere all at once is awesome. Awesome. Um, I was thinking too, as we start winding down here a little bit, uh, you've been uh, doing this for so long. Have you been like, and especially maybe you, Adam, in the streets, have you been there for some of the most, like the biggest pop culture moments in history and got to see it with your own eyes? Hmm. Um, that's a great question. And I have to really think about that. Um, in the meantime, Dax, have you ever slept with yeah. a <laughs> I, I, would, I would say I watched... You know, I was there firsthand to watch Michael Jackson's death unfold. And I, I think that was a pretty big moment in pop culture history, being there kind of on the ground floor as the news was starting to roll in. Oh, you know, I got a, I got a tip that day that there was an ambulance at his house. OK. And, you know, I'm running up to Harvey's desk being like, hey, Harvey, uh, for, there's an ambulance at, at Michael Jackson's house that just went in the front gate. Like, I, you know, can, we need to start making calls to you know starting I, I i was one of the people that got one of the first confirmations that he was dead and you know and then harvey got one and mike walters got one and it was like watching this whole thing uh develop was wild and then I, at that moment i was doing a live shot with I, it was like uh, i don't know fox new york or something and literally our publicist came up to me as i was live on the air and said we're posting it. We're confirming Michael Jackson's dead. And like that moment of being live yeah. on the air and breaking that news for the world was crazy. It's same thing with Prince. I was live on the air when oh, we confirmed man. Prince was had died and being there for Whitney Houston. And I, I mean, it's kind of sad that I'm relating a lot of these with death, but they those death stories are so big and so powerful and take over, you know, the the, the media cycle. But being there for I don't know, Mel Gibson's wild rants and some of the other stuff that were huge stories. I'm Brittany shaving her head. I remember where I was at that moment. I don't know. Just well, weird I mean, stuff I, like that. I mean, to that, you know, you're, you're one of your jobs at TMZ Dax. I mean, weren't you the one that kind of was choosing what was going up on the site or it uh, wasn't that uh, part Dude, of your Ryan, job? It was the most voyeuristic job you could ever ask for. It was awesome. <laughs> it's like a kid in, well, it's like a kid in a candy store of like being yeah. able to pick and choose what actually makes it to the public. And you probably, you both of you guys have probably sat on so much information in your career so far. Well, the the thing was because my job was to choose the like go through and license all the photos from the agencies. So my job every morning would go in, and the way it works is. There's agencies and they have websites and the paparazzi will upload all of their photos and videos to their agency's website from the night before or that day. And so I log in and it's just like tons and thousands of photos from the night before. And you just kind of click on the, the photo of the celeb that interests you. And you're like, I wonder what Jen Aniston was up to yesterday. And then you can look through <laughs> oh the God. set of photos and choose what you want. And so... I would look through all these photos and yes, you get to see all the uncensored and graphic ones and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but it was just a fun experience because 
what I thought was interesting, I was like, okay, if I find this interesting, someone else out there will find it interesting. So that's really what it came down to was I was dictating a lot of like what would the content that would go on TMZ and getting to pitch it out for the show. And, you know, for years, what you saw was kind of what I found interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. to me, that's the heyday of TMZ, too, when you, I mean, well, also, that, that it paid, yeah, it, it was just a great time for pop culture. I mean, a really scary time, but great. Adam, what was your, what were you about to say? Yeah, no, I, I like Dax said, like, I wasn't there because uh, when, we, I'm based on the East Coast, so I was around when, like, Whitney Houston died. I was there at the cemetery. I was there, like, uh, around that, and I just, that was terrible. I remember just working <clears throat> so many hours during the day when that happened, but for me, it was more of, like, personal experiences, like from doing like the Amanda Bynes bong out the window story to, um, you know, I've had some crazy experiences on the street just with celebrities. You know, I was, I remember when Orlando Bloom and Miranda Kerr got divorced, there was a lot of speculation of why they were getting divorced. And um, he was on Broadway at the time. And there was a Friday when they announced they were going to get divorced. And actually this, I have two exposed stories. So Miranda Kerr and Orlando Bloom are getting divorced. They got divorced on Friday. They made the announcement. Now, Around Which that is, time, by the way, remember, a tactic in celebrity news. You always yeah, the Friday releases. Friday, oh my god! It and always you, released you, on Fridays. You try to bury it or get it to slip through because if you get it through the weekend and they don't notice, there's a good chance you dodged a bullet and no one's going to cover your divorce. Anyway, keep going, Adam. Yeah, so they got divorced. And remember that time that Orlando Bloom and Justin Bieber got into a fight? Uh, <laughs> you know, we kind of like, yeah, yeah, no yeah, one yeah. really talked about that. Now, there's a lot of stuff, and I can't get into it legally, of why they apparently were getting divorced. Um, but they have a good relationship now, which they've said, and which is great. But I remember I was sent to go interview, try to get Orlando Bloom. I wasn't set. Like they're like, hey, see if you get Orlando Bloom to talk about it. And I don't, I don't, I didn't feel like a good guy doing that type of stuff. Like that's not the stuff I like to do, especially something like that. It's not cool. Anyway, the Orlando Bloom was on Broadway. He was living in Tribeca. So I, I at that time for the company I was working for, Wink, um, sent me down there to go <laughs> see what he get, and. All the paparazzi stood down the street, and there was like 15 guys at the time. There's not as many paparazzi in New York anymore, and that's because of social media. There's just not enough money in it anymore. But all the paparazzi had photos and cameras were down the street. I have a video camera. I can't really stand down the street because I'm not going to get anything. What am I going to zoom and do video of them? Like I need to actually get an interaction with them. So I remember I pulled up. I stayed with all the paparazzi for like 10 minutes, and they're waiting down the street. They waited there all day. I said, you know what? I'm going to walk in just in front of his apartment and check it out. As I walk to the front of Orlando Bloom's apartment, he comes out, and I'm like, oh, shit. And I look, I look around. I look back. All the paparazzi don't even realize it's Orlando Bloom because they're like 150 yards away, like down the street. <laughs> they don't realize Orlando Bloom just walked out. So I just like let him walk a little bit, and he walked the opposite direction of the paparazzi. And um, I was like, all right, I'm just letting him go. And then, you know, I pull out my camera. I run after him, and I talk to him and i get this interview with him like orlando i just want to see how, how are you man like are you okay you know and i just like set the record straight it, you know like um you know how are you feeling are you in good sp you know a good mental place you know is there any reason for this like do you guys think you guys will be friends and again i don't like doing this type of coverage yeah. but for the company i was working for they wanted me to do that and i had no choice because I, I gotta earn a paycheck and he started talking to me and it was like a really good conversation where he actually like wanted to talk about it and like just basically ended saying there was nothing that happened we're always gonna be family we have kids together she, you know like i'm i'm okay she's okay this is and i remember the paparazzi seeing me videoing him as i'm walking down the street and they just start running down the street like <laughs> oh shit like we're missing the yeah. shot and i got the whole interview with orlando for like a minute and a half and then he like got in the car and went to broadway he just walked the opposite direction and so that was like a very cool big interview just because a new story in the new the time that happened. However, the, By the craziest way, do you, do you remember how wild it was that Orlando hooked up with Selena and Justin hooked up with Miranda? Like what are Wait, the chances I, oh, is of that, that? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to talk well, about that. But yeah. Yeah, that I mean no, it, that's not confirmed. But just, yeah, but yeah, there was but I mean even or there's I remember yeah, Orlando that one shot of him sitting on the curb with Selena. Do you guys yeah. know the one I'm talking about? 100%. Orlando has some wild stuff. And then if you watch that uh Billy Eilish documentary when he's with Katy Perry at Coachella and he oh, comes up weird. to Billy <laughs> Eilish and he's like <laughs> I, he's like out of his mind on something, and he's like, "We're just organisms on Earth, man." Like it was great. What, what was the I second just love story, that Adam? 
yeah, Billy was you... like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and then she had to be like, oh, he was the naked guy on a kayak or on, on a surfing <laughs> boat, and Katy Perry was in a bathing well, suit. But he wanted Billie to go, Eilish's sure. brother had to tell her, like, that's the dude from Lord of the Rings. She goes, that's oh, That's the one great. with the wiener on the, the paddleboard. <laughs> yeah. The second story, and this is not really, um, I guess, maybe I don't know if your audience cares about this stuff, but this is more athlete-related, but it was um, – when TMZ did the story of Ray Rice, they broke the story of the Ray Rice situation at the, you know, he he had physically abused his girlfriend or wife, or whatever it was, in the elevator. And the NFL, like, this became the biggest story in the NFL. Here's the star running back of the NFL abuses a woman, pretty much forced him out of the league. And the NFL did a press conference, and but we couldn't get into it. TMZ wasn't allowed to go to the press conference. But they sort of sent me and said, hey, listen, see what you could get there. See if you could kind of just walk in and show it up. And I'm going to be honest with you. It was a, again, this was a Friday. I was a little stoned, me and my coworker. And I'm wearing like gym shorts and a gym shirt. Like I didn't care. And we just went to the Hilton where the press conference was. And no one even asked us if we were immediate. We just kind of walked in. And people probably thought we were like the camera guys or we were like the ones like who put the stage together. Like no one even like <laughs> looked us up and said, oh, like checked us in if we're immediate. We just walked in. No one stopped us. So me and my coworker, we just sat in the back of the room, and it's all legit media. There's CNN, there's ESPN, there's Fox Sports. Like, very big people in the news space are all there, and they're all going live. And Roger Goodell is doing a press conference to talk about the Ray Rice incident. Now, this is going on for 45 who's, minutes, this press who's conference. Who's president of the NFL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't president know the name. Of the okay, yeah. Roger Goodell. President. So I'm, like, bored in the beginning of this press conference. And, again, I was a little bit in a different world. I call my friend Benji Bronk from the Howard Stern Show. Oh, and Benji! I, call, yeah. I was just saying, like, this is very stuttering John almost. Yeah, uh, yeah. Benji Bronk! That's <laughs> So Benji's a, a buddy Benji. of mine. And I call Benji. I go, Benji, there's a press conference a block away from the press conference. You should crash the press conference. And he's like, what? He's like, you think I can? I was like, Benji, just walk in. Just like crash a press conference. So in the middle of this press conference that's live on ESPN, live on TV, I had Benji kind of like crash the press conference. He's like, don't throw me in the elevator. It's, it's a, if you look on YouTube, it's a very big video. Anyway, towards the end of the press conference, um, I got a call from one of my uh, superiors uh, to say, uh, say, you need to ask a question during the press conference. I'm like, what? And like, yeah, you need to ask a press. And everyone's wearing suits. Again, I'm wearing a gym shirt and gym mesh shorts. And uh, so I raised my hand to ask a question. And they kept giving the microphone to the same people. They kept giving the microphone to Peter King of ESPN and Rachel Nichols of CNN. They kept going back and forth. Better, and I'm raising my hand and they're not calling on me. They're probably like, <laughs> who's this guy? Like some fan that got in the back of the. Finally, like my person's calling me. Like, you need to get on the microphone. So I, I, I. Get the person. I go, dude, you see my hand up? Give me the microphone. They give me the microphone, right? And I go, Mr. Goodell, my name is Adam Glenn from TMZ and TMZ Sports. All of a sudden, as soon as I say that, the whole room turns and looks at me. And I'm like, woof. Like, I just felt the energy switch because TMZ is the one who broke the story about the Ray Rice situation. I go, Mr. Goodell, I ask one question. I go, um, why didn't you guys just call the hotel or why didn't you call the police department, like the police department to get the video of what happened in the, um, the elevator? What happened? And they start to make, like, Roger Goodell starts to, like, give me a bullshit po political answer of why they didn't, like, call and try to get the video. And as I'm like, sitting there standing, the publicist is trying to pull the microphone away from me. And I just start saying, like, listening to the, com the, the in qu answer. And then I go, Mr. Goodell, we made one phone call. You guys have a whole legal department. Can you explain that to me, why you guys weren't able to get the video? And he starts to give me, like, a whole P like political answer back. And just like that, the whole energy of the press conference turns. And everyone's just like, what? Like, basically, the press conference just ended after that because I just called Roger McGadell, uh, Roger Goodell, like, bullshit on, like, his whole thing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I don't think anything of it. Everyone, the press conference ends uh, kind of abruptly. And everyone starts to pack up their equipment. Everyone comes up to me and says, hey, great job, great job. I'm like, I don't even think anything of it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is nice. And then next thing you know, like, I get a call from my boss like, hey, Adam, what's the vibe like at this press conference? I go, I don't know. It's pretty chill. You know, like it's fine. They go, listen, you're trending on Twitter. You're the number one thing on Twitter right now. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then all of a sudden I get in the car and like the radio is talking about me. I'm like, what's going on? And like my phone was blowing up. Twitter went crazy. And then 
John Oliver's talking about me. Rachel Maddow's talking about me. <laughs> my, like my name is like everywhere. Like people are talking about my question, and the quote became the number four quote of 2014. And I'm actually in the like American public life, like the American history of the number four quote of 2000. I'm like in part of American history now for my oh, quote. I love that. For that. Oh and it was God. just like a crazy like what happened. It was like, dude, I wasn't supposed to be there. I was just messing around, and then just became like in like you know again part of American history. I mean, that's amazing. Um, two last things. Are you guys both married right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, but it, back in the day, I mean, did you did you date? Cele- I mean, you had a very close relationship with a lot of celebrities. Were there ever any, I mean, it just popped into my head halfway through this. Did you guys date celebrities at a certain point? Because you were both like, had to be around a lot of them multiple times. I, I got married right, like when I was kind of young at TMZ. So we've been married basically my whole time of working in the industry. So now you I, haven't cheated with Raquel from Vanderpump rules. Have you Dax? I just one, <laughs> once. Or okay. Twice, and I, I just, but... I don't want it to break. If we could break it here, that'd be great. Adam, what about you? <laughs> I Adam, hooked you, you... Up. The only hook. So uh, Dax, I think, you know, uh, the only celebrity I hooked up with, um, was, was Mary Kate Olsen. Um, <laughs> no, with that, wait, 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 no, I did. So like me, wait, you uh, did. So, That's so, not a joke. Ryan, you gotta listen to this. So Ryan, I, uh, so back in the day, if you remember, butter was like the hot spot on Mondays yeah, New in New York. York. And this is back to like page <laughs> six days and stuff like that. Mary, you know, all the celebrities just go there. Leo, I, I met Mary Kate Olsen there. And then we went back to her place in Soho. And here I am like freaking out. Like here I am hooking up with like uh, Mary Kate Olsen, Michelle Tanner from Full House. Right. Like this is going crazy. Right. And then we got to that point. Like I asked her if I should get a condom. Right. And she was like, you got it, dude. And then I. um. <laughs> and then I slapped her in the ass, and she's like, "How rude!" And uh, <laughs> that's full house joke. That's so uh, uh, no, no, I was, that's gonna be good. That's the number five quote of two times twenty three. <laughs> no, I no it's funny story. Oh, honestly, Ryan, when it came to like trying to hook up with celebrities, they all like I like. There's a lot of well, uh, Lana Del Rey like, did hit on thing. Adam, which was pretty great. Yeah, I, I mean, no, I like I had a like. Did I actually did I hook up? Like a lot of times, their people wouldn't allow it to. Like I got celebrities numbers, get but their close, team yeah. didn't allow it. Now there's like Lana Del Rey, which is like a different story. Um, but that's just like it, it's weird. Like their people don't. Um, when it came to like, I remember like Aubrey. Uh, did I ever tell you this, Dax? Like Aubrey O'Day gave her number, mm-hmm. and her publicist <laughs> was just like. You are not hanging out with this guy. You are not <laughs> going. I was like, "What? Come on!" He She'd rather me. her publicist would rather hang out with Polly D than you. That's uh, that's, that's <laughs> I, I uh, she her. dated. She dated another uh, Pap who yeah, was actually yeah. had on the podcast. He was awesome. Gee, uh, um, to go full circle from where we started here, in just terms of Vanderpump Rules, uh, we had that Schwartz thing. In terms of Raquel and Tom, we have not gotten any sort of comment from, well, they had their apologies they released, but nothing video. We had a couple paparazzi photos uh, on TMZ, I believe. But what would you suggest to them? Do you think it's worth, uh, you know, do you think it's worth anything for them to do something like Schwartz did? Or also, do you think Bravo has some sort of gag order on them of like, you do not talk to anybody but us at this point? I think that's what Bravo's doing is you save this shit for the show. Like, we need this. And I think that they will end up talking at some point. And knowing how big this situation's got, I'm sure they'll do the, like, sit down interview with someone. You know, whether that's Andy Cohen, like a, a special, I don't know. But I do feel like they'll do a sit down that'll kind of break the silence. And they'll be like, and you can watch it all unfold fold on the oh, next season of Vanderpump Rules. You know, like, I, that's what I see <laughs> happening because... Bravo wants this. I mean, it's just like the whole thing with the Ultimate Girls Weekend trip or whatever the hell the, the Ultimate other thing Girls is. trip, yeah. Like Randy Glanville and there's a reason Bravo holds on to this stuff because they want you to tune in and watch it. It's hard to get viewers on television shows these days. So it's because social media, we see everything already. We, we see everything all- on TMZ. We see everything on Daily Mail. So it is hard in this day and age to actually make a good show. And that's why they rush to get cameras back up after ending mm-hmm. the season. So you're right. This is an investment for them. Yeah. And they want you to tune in and it's going to work. Everyone's going to tune in. They want to see it unfold. They want to see immediately after. Cause that's one thing that even in an interview you won't get, you won't get to see Raquel break down where you'll be able to see on the show and you'll see 
Tom's reaction. You'll see, you know, you're going to see all of that um, happen live or not live, but you get to see it all in real time. And Adam pointed out on Friday's episode that Raquel left her comments unlocked, but I wanted to know, uh, Adam, I wanted to tell you that's because she can't read. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just um, okay. You guys, I've taken up so much of your time. You guys were so worth waking up early for the podcast is called Hollywood raw. Um, you guys release two episodes a week. Is that, that correct? Yeah, Wednesday is normally like our episode where we'll talk to either a celebrity or uh, someone inside the entertainment world like a paparazzi because they are they have a different perspective than most people do on the celebrity news. So we love talking to photographers. We talk to media moguls. We talk to people who are next to celebs, whether that be like a private jet flight attendant or we've had bodyguards. We've had... Uh, private chefs we've had just kind of like we go all over the place because we want to know what celebrities are really like and the best way to find out what they're really like is talk to the people that are close to them you know the people involved with them on a daily basis and again the bodyguard interviews have been some of my favorite the paparazzi interviews have been some of my favorite um and then we bring on celebs like i think one of our big gets this in the last couple weeks was tara reed Tara Reid oh, yeah. was someone we have wanted on for so long, and we finally got her on because we've covered her life for so long. And, you know, she's like, I'm so misunderstood, you guys. She's like, I don't know why reality stars these days get praised for their craziness and the partying. But, like, when I partied in my younger days, I was crucified for it. Every move she made, it was like, what is she doing? Why is she partying? She And she was like... I was professional. I showed up on time to set. I, I always knew my lines. But the only thing everyone wanted to talk about was my parties. And she's like, it never once affected my work. I don't know why it like literally ruined my career. It was that and the weight loss. I was always remembering the big stories for mm -hmm. Tara. But I, I, I was a casting assistant once, and she came in and auditioned. And I got to say, she was amazing. Like, Dude, it blew it blew me awesome. away because I was like, yeah, I wa she walked in, and I immediately, uh-oh, here, you know, this will be a mess. And it was real. It was like one of the best auditions I had seen that day. Yeah, and that's what I said to her um, because she came in, and she hosted TMZ once. And I had a perception or, you know, perceived perception of Tara and she came in and she knocked out of the park and she was awesome and funny and humble and all those things. And I wanted our audience to see that side of her. So when we had her on, I was like, this is this is the terror I want people to know because everyone has what they think she's like based on the media coverage. But she is really, truly like a kind, funny person. And then Friday you do your pop culture, like, you know, your 10 story oh, yeah. roundup, which <laughs> is really, really awesome. Like you guys, I mean, also I was just thinking and talking to you guys, do you guys have a book in the works at all? I mean, your, your history with all of this stuff would be so, I mean, this is such a, it would be such a great gift for any pop culture lover, just like this podcast is, but it just, is that in the stage planning stages at all for you guys? Yes, and it's titled, I Saw Jay-Z and Beyonce's Elevator Video First. That's the name of the book. Oh, my God. We didn't even talk about the elevator. <laughs> and well, the other thing I want to know is the Brad Pitt jet. Like, what happened on that? I always talk, oh, uh, joke about writing one-act plays for events that I don't know exactly what happened. Like, I, I want to know exactly how that private jet went down. I want to know the elevator, <laughs> the dialogue. Um but I, hopefully you guys will come back down the line. You guys just uh, such a wealth of knowledge and you have such passion. And I just you, I just geeked out entirely this hour. So thank you so much for spending the hour with us because I really – But you guys, Hollywood Raw Podcast, go subscribe. Go rate it five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. They were nice enough to come on here. So be nice enough to – I mean, you're going to dig it anyway. So go check it out and go rate it five stars right out of the gate. Uh, is there anything else coming up for you guys? Uh, who else have we got coming up, Adam? Anyone – or any stories um, that any stories you're looking at this week or keeping an eye on? No, I mean, listen, I just I got like a cool. I don't want to. I'm going to do a cool interview this week. Not even like I'll, I know I'll run into them. Like my whole job is like connecting past. So this coming this week, I'm going to run into someone who I always get excited to see. Um, if I'm in, yeah. which would you know, be right, who? It's, it's, <laughs> I'll, I'll, actually, I'll, I was trying to hide it because I was like, I don't know. People get weird, but uh, I'm going to run into. I like I was. My job is I try to cross paths with people. And every time I see this person, it's always fun. It's cool and interesting, unique. And it's Charles Barkley. 
you know, and it's oh, someone like I that I always love. <laughs> like he's just awesome. Like he doesn't hold back. Yeah. Like, he's just a real person. And I appreciate talking to people like that. Like there's there's very few people now like I get excited to talk to. Like where I mean mm -hmm. a lot of it's work, but like there's some people who are just it's like reassuring. Like it just like that some people still have souls in a soulless industry. And yeah. Charles Barkley is one of them. He's just a real dude. So I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and where can we follow you guys both? I mean, I know you have the Hollywood Raw podcast, uh, Instagram page, uh, and then you guys have your own personal accounts and stuff like that. So, Adam, like, where can we see if you do cross paths with people like Charles Barkley? Where do we see that at? Yeah, you can follow me at on Instagram, TikTok, at Adam Glynn, G-L-Y-N. Uh, I also have a YouTube page called Adam Zappel, and that's where I post all my interviews and stuff. Um, it's just some of my cool, interesting, quick run-ins and stuff. And then well, I'm just at Dax Holt on all social platforms. It's an easy one. It didn't get taken too quickly. Uh, since I got a <laughs> unique name. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for your service. And I look forward to your Friday podcast. Like this is a podcast that I will actually listen to. And I try not to steal things from people. So I stay away from all the reality show. But like I just the inside information on this is just it's so I don't know. This is the part that I truly geek out on. So thank you guys so much. And hopefully I'll talk to you again soon. Dude, thank you for having us. Love thank it. you, Ryan.